a young girl who stands out in a world where everyone is obsessed with games. She was asking her friends if they wanted to come over to her house to eat tidiokbaki. Her friend named Lee Sewell loves it so she decided to come. However, her best friend remembers that double experience event from the game. Unfortunately, Yoon Young doesn't play games. They apologize due to the event from the game that they usually play. So she had no choice. Most of her classmates play games such as AOS, Sandbox, FPS, Martial Arts, Arcade and Adventure. Because of the modernity of games, she had no high school friends nowadays. Since she's a person who doesn't play games, she feels like she will become someone who's invincible every single day. She was so sad that no one remembered her birthday. Suddenly, she heard a loud growl of a dragon that was raided by the players. It was the game that most people liked. The game was notified as a new raid was going to happen that caught everyone's attention. She got aggravated to see people about this. She then turns around to head back to her home while being curious of what this game is great about. As time passed by, she finally got home. Yoon Young immediately removed her shoes. She saw her brother sitting at the chair while staring into nothing. As her brother turned around her, she got scared of what he's been doing. It turns out that her brother surprised her with a confetti to greet her for her birthday. She feels crappy about this. This guy was Kang Jun Hyuk, a 19 years old teenager and Yoon Young's brother. Jun Hyuk pointed to her cake that their mother bought but he opened it and took a little bite. As she took a look at the cake, she was surprised to see a single slice which ironically was what brother said. She got so irritated after this. All of a sudden, her brother calls her out to give a present. This immediately changes her mood and she dashes to take her present. She is very excited to open this. As she opened the present, her gift was an Orium wing which was trending to their generation so her brother bought one for her. She immediately threw it away because she was not into games. Her brother luckily catches the game. He was confused by Yoon Young being sassy for her present because this kind of game was too expensive. Yoon Young was fiercely mad at him after spending a waste of money on a game. She's trying to guilt trip Jun Hyuk for their hard-working parents. However, Jun Hyuk knew that because of passion for studying, all of her friends became strangers to her, and he informed her that because of games, he got along so well with his own friends. He also pointed out that her friends didn't know her birthday because they chose to play games instead which triggered her. Yoon Young was confident that she could master this game in no time while Young Hayek was sure that she would never leave the beginner zone in a few days. She is still insisting that she can defeat this game in just a matter of time unlike Young Hayek. Yoon Young glared at her brother while his brother just smirked at her. Moreover, his brother sighed, and he decided to make a bet with her. This surprises her that her brother suddenly offers a bet while Young Hayek offers to bet with her. He swore who's better between them from him at studying and him at gaming. He suddenly counts. As he finished counting, he bet on who will be in the top one because there's only 1% of max leveled players in the game means that almost everyone is at top one. That's why she needed to be level maxed out until next semester. She began flustered to hear this and unsure if she could reach the max level. Therefore, he introduced the bet's reward. The winner will have a cute dog since Young Hayek already persuaded their parents to let them have one. This immediately caught her interest since she really loves to have a dog. However, her brother had an allergy to dog fur but he is determined to do this. He added that if he wins, she needs to faithfully address him with an endearing honorific. As she heard this, she felt disgusted to do an endearing honorific to him. Young Hayek teases her out. Afterwards, she was determined to win this bet. Therefore, there's no more turning back between them. She then scrolled to her phone to look for a cute dog. After a few moments, she started playing the Orium Wing. An amazement washed over her as she finally saw what inside the game looks like. All of a sudden, a game system opened and acknowledged her limited edition user account. Suddenly a mirror of creation appeared in front of her to create her character. The system activates the premium appearance personalization. To her surprise, a lot of choices appeared around her to choose from. She tried a lot of various designs to choose. She was enjoying herself changing with multiple pieces of equipment. She then finally chose a perfect hairstyle for her. Two hours later, she is now thinking of a beginner weapon to use. She can't see anything cute about these choices. But somehow, something caught her attention. She chooses a mage staff as her weapon. Moreover, the aim asked her to choose what she desire name in the game. As she wants to put Kang Yoon Young as her username, it already exists from the game so she must choose a different name. Upon thinking so hard, an idea came to her mind. 
She chose Piram as her username and fortunately, it was available and she didn't hesitate to use this. Afterwards, the game summoned her as Piram, a level 1 player. Since she had no idea of this game, she was curious of what she could do next but all of a sudden, someone came at her due to a concern of taking 2 hours to create her character. It turns out that this is his brother, the Darkness Warrior Kang Jun Hayuk. While she is confused about his brother's head in this game, she thought that his brother wanted to go together with her to play games with her. He wanted her to help for a while since she had no idea about games so he's going to teach her some information. She had no choice so she accepted his offer to teach her. Young Hayek handed a scroll and commanded her to shout scroll use. Moreover, she did. As she casted the scroll, she suddenly teleported somewhere at the game. She came in the ancient ruins of Assassini. She flustered after being transported to this place. Yun Yun was so scared at this place since this place has a weird ambience. Suddenly something just moved behind her. So she immediately turned around to check if this was her brother. Little did she not know that something was about to materialize behind her. She began to tremble after being so nervous at this place. A monster smirks at her since she's the second person to ever dare come to his place. This awes the Grim Reaper, a boss of the ancient ruins of Assassini. She gasps to see a boss level monster in front of her. The boss was definitely going to kill her. It uses a death blow to attack Yun Yong. Due to confusion, Grim Reaper got confused as he killed her instantly. The system notifies again for achieving and reward of first time experiencing death with 10 experiences that level her up. Just a sudden, she woke up from her deathbed. Her brother was actually waiting for her at the shrine while she was confused about what just happened to her. Moreover, he introduced the shrine where she will often visit as a noob as Jun Hayek assumes. Suddenly, she got mad at him for making fun at her instead of helping her out but Jun Hayek swears that he helps her to level up. Her anger grew as she asked him if he should call this help or teach. Therefore, she decided to learn the game on her own but her brother was teasing her if she didn't need his help anymore. She confidently walks away from him but Jun Hayek stops her from going into this room. It was because this place was the beginner zone which made her unable to get out of this place for over a month. Meanwhile at the beginner zone, Townview City, Tiram was removed from their party. They sarcastically wanted to help her out. But in reality, they don't want her to get along with them for being a noob. They apologize at her so she immediately understands this. She felt depressed while the others felt bad at her for removing them from their party. Kiram was having a hard time taking the beginner zone quest where she needed to eliminate all of the kobolds found in the dungeon. Moreover, she sprinted in the village to find a member for her party. Luckily, she's not too late looking for some members to recruit for the quest. Kiram wasted no time and immediately asked a guy if she could join their party. He inquired about her level and job class so he could decide if they could join her. She said that she is a level 15 sorceress which caught someone's attention hearing this. The guy was surprised to see her in a high level state but had no party. The two guys earlier came up to them, asking if they could possibly not take her into their party because she will only stay behind and leech off of their experience points. Because of having no idea in a game, she assumed they told her to stay behind but she said that everyone told her to cast spells behind but she did nothing. They are pretty sure that Piram was a useless person and due to her cuteness, some parties pick her to their party. They tried to persuade him to take somebody else if they didn't want Piram leech off their efforts. He then reasoned himself that they are all sorcerers and they needed a vanguard which was obviously a lie. She realizes that she's being a burden for every single party that she joins. It has been a few days and no one wants her to be in the same party as her. All of this happened because of an old con artist who appeared at the perfect time when she wanted to change her job class. Earlier at the Tower of Sorcerers where sorcerer jobs can be changed, an old guy surprised her. He saw Piram's great talent so he asked her name. She introduced her name as Piram, a level 15, novice job class. He asked her if she wanted to be his disciple. He was said that he's the strongest sorcerer's job master, Petit Chef the Sage, which has four hidden job classes. The system said that the hidden job class was popular inside the game which required specific requirements to change to this hidden job. She's not sure about this but due to desperation, she wanted to take the risk. The sage asked her for her devotion so he asked for 50 silvers. Without having a second thought, she gave him 20 silvers. Suddenly the system pops up to notify her that she acquired sleep master class which made her confused of what could this possibly do. Therefore, he proceeded to teach her. He introduced a fire which is one of the fundamental spells he said. So she did. The fire became a blaze that made her confused. Suddenly, the notification sleep master penalty activated on her. She got flustered by the penalty. The system added that she received a state of normality which is slumber. All of a sudden, she falls asleep so the impersonating sage takes her belongings to steal while she's vulnerable. 
before running away. He left her a note that appreciated all her effort and mentioned not to look for him ever again. Since then, she regrets taking the sleep master class that made her stay still in the beginner zone. She began to do some quests. As she was running away, a strange guy with a helm noticed her from afar. He immediately recognized her in game name. Somehow, his party noticed him for having his attention away from them. He suddenly leaves his party which makes them confused about where he is going. After a few moments, Pyram goes through a cobbled dungeon to finish her quest. As she was busy walking, she noticed a cute creature passing by. It was startled to see a human inside the dungeon. This cute creature is level 9 youngest cobbled. She had no idea how she could kill this creature so she gave it a slime candy. All of a sudden, it frightened into something. The cute cobbled suddenly ran away from her, which made Pyram confused. Just a sudden, she felt an eerie aura. The system notifies that due to cobbled's strong bond, they will attack intruders in a group. A group of cobbles came at her to attack and the system gives her a quest to subjugate the 50 cobbles. Because of panic, she bumps into something. This was the level 17 boss, Werewolf Wriggle Wriggle, which added to her quest. She began to be confused about what she needed to do. Suddenly, she noticed something. She saw them sitting quietly so she assumed that they were not on good terms. Every single cobbled showed their respect to the werewolf while Pyram wanted to talk with him. Moreover, the werewolf asked her what's matter with her. Pyram was nervous after realizing that cobolds and werewolf is actually on good terms. All of a sudden, one of the cobolds accused her of seducing their youngest cobold with a candy so they wanted to catch her. Because of this, Mr. Werewolf went mad for Pyram trying to seduce their youngest cobbled but she tried to reason herself that she really wanted to give it a candy. As Pyram was really trying her best to tell the truth, something caught their attention. Out of nowhere, someone lunges an attack at the werewolf using its night dash. Because of how powerful his attack, the werewolf flew away. He assumed that Pyram was in imminent danger. Everyone was startled to see their boss get attacked by a human. He said that I've come to help but he didn't manage to finish his words. Because he suddenly coughs blood. So Pyram so this guy collapsed on the floor after what he just did. She wasted no time helping this guy but he insisted that he's fine. Meanwhile, the cobolds run immediately through their big brother to check his condition. Suddenly, he rages after what they did. He dashes towards them with a killing intent. Werewolf's attack hits her after being caught off guard. Luckily, she blocked the attack so she only received 50% damage from the werewolf's attack. Her health point turns half after taking the attack. Pyram had no idea how could they win against Mr. Werewolf. All of a sudden, the cobolds start moving to attack her. Once again, the guy used his night body headbutt to save her from the cobolds. She's confused as to why he was helping her but he insisted that they had no time to explain. He then grabs her. They run away from the raging werewolf to escape the danger. Mr. Werewolf eagerly wanted to kill them. Luckily, they managed to hide for a while but due to her curiosity, she kept asking him. Mr. Werewolf turned his sight where they were hiding. Pyram started to blush as he hugged her so tight. The dungeon monsters keep looking for them while they are trying their best to hide. They barely escape from the dangerous situation. However, Pyram was confused about something. She saw this guy dead a while ago that caught her curiosity, and he suddenly revived. He explained that she just misunderstood it because he had a special skill. This guy was curious as to why she's doing the dungeon quest alone. She wasted no time and invited him to team up with her. Therefore, they became a party. He introduced himself as Tristefan, a level 18 guardian knight class. He added that his skill that he used earlier was the only offensive skill he had but all he had was defensive skills. Moreover, she also introduced herself as Pyram, a level 15 sorceress. Fan was glad to hear this to support him out from afar. He was going to guide her to their escape route but in her mind, she was scared to tell the truth about her sleep master class. She was confident to end this mission in order to get out of the beginner zone. Fan steps out to confront the cobbles. Everyone was startled to see a human in their dungeon so they rushed to call everyone to attack him. While Fan was taking their attention, he called Pyram to cast her spell. However, she used her staff to whack the cobbles. This made Fan confused about what she did since she's a sorcerer. Afterwards, they managed to keep going and defeated 27 cobbles. They keep up till they reach 32. Four more cobbles left to finish the quest. Just a moment, Pyram leveled up which made her happy. Fan congratulate her for her efforts. However, he asked her about the reason for avoiding casting spells which flabbergasted Pyram. She was hesitant to tell the truth but Pyram had no choice but to tell the truth. After she told the truth about her skill, they moved forward to finish their quest. They were seeking for Mr. Werewolf's location to hunt him down since they already defeated 50 cobbles. Finally, they found him. Fan was planning to distract him first then Pyram will cast the fire spell from behind. 
As Piram hesitated from the result, Fan tried to convince her to have faith within him. Therefore, he approaches Mr. Werewolf from behind. Unluckily, Mr. Werewolf just slaps him that made him down. If you are new to my channel, please let me know where you're from in the comments section so I could know what country my man or recap reaches. Just a moment, Piram fell asleep. When she woke up, she was confused about where she was. Fan immediately noticed she woke up while using the cobbled mask. Because of trauma, her instinct takes in to attack him. Just a moment they head back to the Adventurer's Inn. Fan was explaining what happened earlier. He said that Piram used her fire spell and because of this, the werewolf was defeated instantly. And because of sleep masterclass she fell asleep so Fan took him back to the town. She apologizes for what she did. However, this wasn't a big deal for him so he changed the topic about where Piram allocated her stats. Because of her ignorance in the game, she had no idea what it meant. Fan was disappointed to know that Piram might never distribute all her status points. Moreover, he explained that status was used to enhance the capability of character for a fixed amount that increases with level, and it was classified into vitality, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, and luck. He advised her to put her status points on strength, intelligence, wisdom and dexterity to improve as a sorceress. So she did, and put her status points that Fan advises. Moreover, he took something from his inventory. He took something that he wanted to give to her since this was nothing to him. He handed a wriggling muscle that blessed the user with the strength of a werewolf for 5 minutes after consuming. This item only usable when the sum of vitality and strength doesn't exceed 10, but in Piram's perspective, she was disgusted to its ugly face. Fan said that when she killed the werewolf, this item came out so he inquired her to use this item. She came up with an idea that once she used this item, her body will transform into how the werewolf looks like and she hated it. She refused to take this since she doesn't like it. Unfortunately, due to his stats, he can't use it but Piram could use it since her stats are low. She keeps on refusing. He said it's more tasty than what you think while Piram discussed it. Eventually, she accepted it but she had no idea how she could possibly eat this since it was too gross for her. Suddenly, the item made a weird noises that caught her attention. The strawberry-flavored wriggling muscle repeatedly saying eat me fast. She cries as she really hates muscles. Fan decided to redeem their reward after they finished the quest. Moreover, Piram started after completing one more quest. She finally got out of the beginner zone. Piram thought that Fan was just faking her joy for her but he insisted that he was actually happy for her. Suddenly, something caught Piram's attention. So she called him. She was concerned about Fan's age in real life so she asked. Fan said that he was in 11th grade. Coincidentally, Piram was actually in 11th grade too. Afterwards, she is really excited to get out of the beginner zone so she rushes with Fan. Unfortunately, it's already past 2 am so Fan needed to go to sleep since he had class for tomorrow. Piram was shocked to hear that the time was actually 2 am. She apologizes for keeping Fan late at night so she also decides to sleep. Fan enjoyed their adventure together. So Piram too so she opened her system to leave the game. Out of nowhere, Fan grabs her hand. Piram had no idea what the reason was. It turns out that Fan wants to play together again with her. She didn't waste time to answer so she said, yes, of course. Then Fan let go of her hand and wanted her to meet him at the town square at 5 p.m. Afterwards, Piram Aka Yoon stood up from her room. Suddenly, her brother also came out to his room and immediately noticed that she was still not asleep. Yoon Young ignores him saying that she is actually going to. Jun Hayek noticed her hard work in the game so he asked how well is she doing so Yoon Young said she's doing fine. Her egoistic brother said, if you're curious about anything, just tell me since my level is a bit high. If you need help I could help you. As she answered that she doesn't need his help, Jun Hayek quickly grabs the cup. He drinks all the juice that Yoon Young pours. She got mad at her brother for being annoying all the time. Moreover, she headed back to her room. She drank the juice to prepare herself to go to sleep. She then jumps to her bed. As she was laying down, she realized that so many things happened today. Her former party member is trying to discredit her, the werewolf, and the cobbles. Also for the first time, she had a friend in a game which is Tristefan. She grinned since they were going to play together the next day. However, because of remembering all the things that happened to her with fans she can't fall asleep. The next day, Yoon Young was walking towards her school. Because of playing too much last day, she was so tired that the guy noticed. He recognized her from her name as she passed him. Meanwhile at the school, Yoon Young imagined the wriggling muscle that wanted to be eaten by her. It lunges at her. Afterwards, the wriggling muscle forced itself to be eaten by Yoon Young. 
As she opens her eyes, her body turns into masculine that makes everyone shocked to see a muscular sorceress. Suddenly, she woke up and slammed the desk because she doesn't want to be a muscular sorceress. She then realized that she actually fell asleep inside the room. Because of this, their professor got mad at her and ordered her to stand at the back. Everyone laughs at her actions that made her embarrassed. However, the guy that recognized her earlier was actually one of his classmates. After the class, her best friends were curious why she was suddenly shouting muscular sorceress, so they assumed that she was secretly playing a game this time. She opposes their accusation in order to keep Yoon Young away from their assumptions. However, they do not believe her since these things could only happen in the game. Yoon Young found a way out to reason herself and she said sorcerers don't only appear in games. However, she was hesitant to ask for their help since she's not playing a game for a long time. She supported her reason that she just had a dream about sorceress, and additionally, they never saw her playing games. Afterwards, they believe her but they ask her to tell them if she did because they are going to help her out. Moreover, they decided to buy some snacks for their break time. Meanwhile, Ti Chol is just staring at Yoon Young while his friend is trying to snap out of him. After a few moments, he turned to his friend who was trying to advise him to take Yoon Young to go out. He rejected his offer because he insisted that he had feelings for Yoon Young but his friend really knows that he did because his face already turned red. He grabs his friend while insisting on his friend's accusation. But somehow, he asked if it was obvious so his friend replied that he actually did. Meanwhile, Yoon Young Ak Piram goes back to the game with Fan once more and they are planning to set up Piram before heading to the next town. But Piram had a thought that she actually doesn't need to buy a new one. But in Fan's mind, he saw that her equipment doesn't look like a limited edition. It turns out that she actually had too many items for the past month in this game while she's stuck in the beginner zone. Fan asked her if she bought all of this and she replied that she only picked some of it. Furthermore, Fan asked about how much money she left which Piram was confused about. Piram said I have three silvers, did I use a lot? Moreover, they go through a merchant to sell all the useless stuff that Piram picked up. Suddenly Piram grabs him, because she wanted these items given back to her since these are hard to collect. Fan said that all of it was useless and that made her cry more. She was wondering why Fan didn't sell wriggling muscle instead but Fan was pretty sure she will use it one day. Afterwards, they are going to buy her some new equipment. All of a sudden, she hugged him and thanked him. After a few moments, they bought cobbled hood, cobbled robe, and cobbled boots for Piram. Fan became broke as she fulfilled the remaining amount from her equipment. Piram was so happy with her new equipment that made Fan also happy to see her happier now. As they move through the town, Piram makes a sizzling sound beside her. It turns out that there's food beside them that Piram likes the most. Piram was delighted to eat this food since she always buys it. Therefore, they are now planning to earn some money after eating their food. Meanwhile, his brother Jun Hayuk was at the top of the roof while observing his sister. He was bitter. Earlier from the dungeon, he saw her magic blazing fire that was powerful for a low level. He was gladly happy to see his sister manage to change her class all by herself. However, he noticed something. The raging werewolf was unharmed. As Jun Hayuk hesitated to help them, he saw Fan standing up all of a sudden. The werewolf began to attack him while he seemed unfazed. As it claws, approaching, Fan snaps out of it that instantly kills Mr. Werewolf. It turns out that Fan was actually acting like a noob at the game all this time and he's the reason why Mr. Werewolf got defeated. Due to a big level gap with the monster, Fan gained no experience. Jun Hayuk began to think about his reason for hiding his true identity. Fan suddenly turned at his back but he saw nothing. Luckily, Jun Hayuk managed to hide but not his shiny head. Fan was curious but he ignores it and goes to Piram to help her out. Jun Hayuk was upset to see him. Fan turned his head at the top of the roof and he recognized Jun Hayuk from the last time he saw him. As their eyes contacted, both of them asked each other who they actually are. If you want the next part of this manual recap, please comment your opinion and don't forget to like and subscribe our channel for support.